Get your CGR shirts and glassware at ClassicGameRoom.com. Classic Game Room is brought to you by Magnum Skywolf. CGR is supported by fans on Patreon. Thank you. Welcome to Classic Game Room for the review of Ikari 3 The Rescue, which is a fun game on the NES, but nothing compared to the amazing cartridge artwork. Let's take a close-up look and then play the game. Enjoy! Wow, we've got two shirtless dudes with bandanas wearing parachute pants that manage to be tight and loose at the same time. People being kicked in the face, girls being rescued explosions, all games should look like this. Even the puzzle games. Fool, you brought a harpoon to an underwater gunfight. Oh, and he punched me in the face, you dick. It's Ikari 3, the rescue from 1990 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Look into my eye, it's a bad day when the president's wife has been issued a giant post-it note that was then forwarded to a bohunk who presumably has to save the girl from the dude with the mustache and the pointy finger. Cars and vans drive towards the guy with no shirt who then picks up one of them and just oh wait, no, those are binoculars. What the hell is going on in this game? I'm not scared of your pirouetting! Yeah, we just synchronized jump kicked out of an exploding tank without shirts on It's Ikari 3 after the weird ass but still awesome Ikari 2 Victory Road. The series returns to more 80s testosterone fueled sweaty predictable action, even though it's technically early 90s. Grab a friend and punch hundreds of enemies in the face. Unless you've been living under a rock, you should know how Ikari Warriors is played, more or less. Ikari 3 The Rescue is actually kind of weird, but not weird in the same way that Ikari 2 was weird. That game was just outright weird. This one is weird because it's like they forgot their guns or something. They left them at home. Maybe they wanted that extra challenge and after watching Star Wars, decided to take on the entire empire all by themselves with their fists. Aren't you a little short for an Akari warrior? It's not a bad game. Actually, it's quite well made for the NES. I just kind of miss blowing everything up with machine guns and flamethrowers and stuff. Like Rambo didn't walk into the jungle to slap a bunch of enemies with his fists. He was there to blow them up with an M60 while going Whoa! the entire time. That was really fun to do, by the way. Try it. Whoa! Come on. Gotta do the spinning jump kick. You can't defeat my bandana. Oh man, you did. At least you get a machine gun for some of the boss battles and the underwater sequence. But for the most part, Akari 3 actually feels more like a vertical scrolling double dragon than Akari Warriors. That being said, it's not bad, but the infinite continues do make it surprisingly easy. So if you're still living in 1990 or 1991, I would suggest this one as a rental. In addition to picking up that sweet VHS copy of Roadhouse, throw in Akari 3 while you're at it, beat it that weekend, and then exchange it for Mega Man on Monday. And I have one. Again. He always looks like he has something hot in his eye there. While it's not terrible and the music's pretty good, the best way to describe this is that it's kind of a half-assed effort from SNK. This feels like a weaker game than it could have been. The levels are pretty repetitive. Actually, the underwater sequence is the best. Sadly, it's pretty short. Ooh, cutscene. 
We've, we've gone for a swim. That's nice and relaxing after killing the bad guys. Obviously, like any of the Akari Warriors games, it's best enjoyed two-player, single-player, it just... it just gets kind of old and tedious quickly. You're being scored even though the score doesn't show up on screen. You'll see that when you die. Which you will because the collision detection is questionable. While most of the enemies look the same, some of them can be knocked down with one flying jump kick, while others require an elaborate fist battle, followed by a spin kick, and then hopefully the Van Damme splits. Beware of cheap one-hit deaths, because Ikari 3 is full of them. Rolling boulders? Why not? Now it is like legit Akari Warriors. Seriously, it would be a great rental, but that's where Akari 3 ends. While the first game and Victory Road certainly had their issues, they felt more like Akari Warriors. This one is half-baked at best. The ballet troupe has come to get me. It does have its moments though. I like the ballet troopers and the enemy soldiers that lay on the ground until you approach them, where they then spring into the air and spin at you. I mean, that, that seems like an actual effective combat move. This suffers from quite a bit of flicker and slowdown, but what ails Ikari 3 the most is that it seems incomplete. It's not a very long game, the boss battles are quite generic, and they added some enemies in here like the jetpack troopers for one little scene. Like, I don't know, maybe put more jetpack troopers in the game, that would have livened it up. It's not terrible at some point, you do rescue the little girl, and she just tags along and does nothing. Stop it. Stop it, that's not nice. You can't even swing her around like a fireball morning star or anything. I mean, what's the point? All right, let's go, little girl. Does she give me some backup at least? If you're gonna tag along, do something. Like she should shoot fireballs, at the very least. I like this from the style standpoint. I think its heart is in the right place, which is the sweaty 1980s. When you zoom in on the animations, they're wonderful. Uh, when you're punching with the bandana, you can tell that gives them extra force. I mean, look at those muscles. The Van Damme spin kick. Can he do the 8-bit splits? And he's got a bit of a mullet back there, I think. And let's turn to the left here. Oh yeah, that's def he's definitely rocking, rocking the mullet. That's party in the back. Is that a rat tail? No, that's his shoulders. <laughs> he would get bonus points for a rat tail. But from the gameplay standpoint, it's a one play kind of game. Rent it, play it, send it back. I like enemies that have a caboose. Or now that we live in the future, just don't pay more than five bucks for it. You shot me with your spinning blade thing! Why can't I shoot at an angle? Why do you hate 45 degrees? Despite its weaknesses, Ikari 3 is kinda fun, and I've got a classic game room shout out and thank you! Going to David from Springfield, Ohio. Thank you, David! No! Oh, I think I was caught with seaweed. I've enjoyed this one. It's not as good as Ikari 2, but it's still. Definitely got its moments. Uh, had I paid attention to the cutscene at the beginning, you would have seen clearly that the daughter was kidnapped, and then little trucks drive through his eyeballs, and the entire mission is in his head. Obviously. If you're going to buy the game anyway, buy it through ClassicGameRoom.com. Classic Game Room is supported by fans on Patreon. Thank you. Now prepare for the Lord Carnage Club, where I celebrate these backers on Patreon by shouting their name in a volcano! Derek Langley, 
beer is the trick. Steven Chucknick from New Jersey. Michael Fernandez. People not named Michael Fernandez aren't Michael Fernandez. Al Stiver. Jason, 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 Jason from British Columbia. Philip Straubenmuller from Vienna, Austria. Austria. Cue the thunder. Jeff, Captain Dauntless, Briar. Cue the lava. I don't know what lava sounds like. It sounds like this. Jack Stavris from Australia. Oh, hi, Cunny. Master of Thunder. Chip Sankvale, fighter of space bees! Woo! Rick DeBarros gets the extra disco. Michael and Ariana Nelson, Nelson. fighters of the future! That's enough disco, because now it's time to shout Busy Signal! That's right, and keep the volume loud and the party rocking for Sean Zoltek. Really? No. Sean Zoltek! Sergio Matthias Hergert! Tubular! Will! Will! Will? Will! Will! Will. <laughs>